Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ian Dunn, and I'm a PhD student at the University of Palermo. The paper being presented today is the stochastic response of beams equipped with tuned mass dampers subjected to random moving loads. It was written with Alberto Di Matteo, a postdoctoral researcher, Giuseppe Failla, a professor at the University of Reggio Calabria, Professor Antonina Pirota, my supervisor, a professor at the University of Palermo, an honorary professor of the University of Liverpool, and a research student, Andrea Francesco Rossillo. I'd like to begin by discussing the classical solution of the multi-span Euler-Bernoulli beam. The classical solution to this problem is very well understood and it's really the cornerstone upon which much of the field of dynamic analysis is built. The solution, however, is lacking when we consider beams of increasingly large numbers of spans. In real world applications, the classical method can prove prohibitive to thorough analysis. Considering the beam shown in the figure here, the classical solution would require four coupled equations of motion in which there would be 16 unknown constants which must be simultaneously solved. This is due to the fact that the classical solution cannot be applied to multi-span beams. It requires us to consider each span as an individual beam with boundary conditions which relate the spans to one another, depending on the type of support or attachment that connects them. This solution, therefore, results in large matrices which are very computationally demanding. Considering the same beam from earlier, the characteristic equation in free vibration is shown here. From this point, the separable variables approach is shown, where the displacement is represented by phi x e to the power i omega t, the rotation is theta x e to the power i omega t, the bending moment is mu of x e to the i omega t, and the shear is psi of x e to the i omega t. Each of these four eigenfunctions can then be related to one another using a derivative method that's shown here. And we see that the fourth derivative of namely psi gives us the standard equation of motion, which we then show again in terms of d to the power of four using the first eigenvalue. This gives us the characteristic equation in free vibration, where sigma squared is equal to omega squared multiplied by m bar, which is the generalized mass, the, uh, the length of the beam, L to the power of four, over EI, the flexural rigidity. From here, the matrix method is followed, where the vector y is constructed from the four eigenfunctions previously discussed. This vector consists of the matrix omega of x, which is constructed from the characteristic equation, and the vector c, which is composed of the unknown constants. In the interest of clarity, the matrix omega of x is expanded here, and we see that it comes from the solution of the eigenvalues within the characteristic equations. I would like to stress or emphasize again that the classical method requires j plus one number of matrices to be constructed for j number of attachments or supports. Moving back to the consideration of the time domain, the equation of motion for the beam's response to a forcing action can be found. Here we consider a distributed load along the entire length of the beam, and the classical solution is constructed using Duhamel's integral which gives the equation shown here, in which omega k is the natural frequency at mode k or the kth mode, m subscript k is the modal mass, and f tau is the forcing action. The modal mass is constructed from the generalized mass integrated by psi of k, psi in the kth mode of x squared between l and 0 for the length of the beam. The proposed method, however, differ differs from the classical method in one fundamental aspect. The discontinuities are modelled as forces acting upon the beam. This means that a support or an attachment can be modelled within a single span, removing the need for additional boundary conditions or equations of motion. This method is based on the theory of distributions and can be used to derive closed format expressions for the eigenfunctions, the characteristic equation is the determinant of one 4x4 four four matrix for any number of discontinuities, the orthogonality conditions for the eigenfunctions, the time domain solution under any forcing action. The equation of motion therefore becomes as before, EI delta to the power of 4 W in terms of space and time x and t by delta x to the power of 4, 
plus m bar delta w of x and t by delta t squared plus r of x and t, where r of x and t contains the reactionary forces from the discontinuities. In this case, that would be from a TMD. In this equation, we see PJ of T or negative PJ of T would be the forcing and Dirac's delta at XJ ensures that the force is kept at the exact point of application. As before, the solution requires us to consider the beam in free vibration. This is similar to the equation shown previously. The only addition is the term PJ of omega, which accounts for the attachments. This term is found by Fourier transforming PJ of T to make the equation applicable to the space domain. This also has an effect on the matrix solution, namely in the addition of this term, J, X and XJ, PJ of omega. We can see that contained within PJ of omega is negative KTMDJ, which is the stiffness of the TMD, and again, Dirac's delta, as I mentioned earlier. Here, we see the full solution of the matrix method again with the term J of X, XJ. And following this solution, we enforce the boundary conditions as at the beam's extremes. And the characteristic equation is found, as I mentioned, as a determinant of a 4x4 four four matrix. I'd like to stress one last time that the matrix used to find the characteristic solution using the proposed method will always be a 4x4 four four matrix, regardless of the number of attachments or supports contained within the beam. When considering this beam's response to a forcing action, we must first determine the orthogonality conditions. These are found by considering the beam in free vibration at two different modes. The first orthogonality condition is found by multiplying the free vibration equation of motion at mode n by phi m and the equation of motion at mode n at mode m by phi at n. Integrating by parts and subtracting the first equation for the second gives the first orthogonality condition. Then, multiplying the first two equations by sigma at n and sigma at m, respectively, and subtracting the first from the second leads to the second orthogonality condition, shown here. From these orthogonality conditions, the impulse response function can be derived, which leads to the equation shown here where psi of mode k represents the modal mass. And you see here that we also include the term from the tuned mass damper, where m tmg j is the mass, k tmd j is the spring stiffness, and c tmd j is the damping ratio, or the damping contained in the dash pot, I should say. Again, considering a distributed harmonic load, this takes the form shown below, and this can be found in papers by Olivetto and Faila. In a previous presentation, I presented the results shown here. These results are only being presented to illustrate the validity of the proposed method. Here, a two-span beam was subjected to a distributed harmonic load, and the response was calculated using the proposed method and the finite element method. As you can see, the results match perfectly. However, the proposed method is more computationally efficient using five modes, whereas the finite element method requires 25 elements and five modes. You can see on the left, the full response over five seconds, and on the right, a zoomed in version of the first 0.5 seconds, showing a complete match between the finite element method and the novel proposed method. From here, it is then relatively straightforward to subject the beam to any form of loading. Poissonian loading was chosen as it models traffic loading fairly accurately, and as continuous beams are frequently used to model bridges, the effects of traffic loading can be considered relatively important. Poissonian loading is a special case of random loading in which loads of random amplitudes arrive at random independent times, although, in our case, they are all moving at the same speed in order to most closely model traffic loading. Poissonian 
uh, loading can be, can, can be described or considered as a method of discretizing truly random white noise. Here we have a standard way of looking at Poissonian loading and a standard um, graph of Poissonian loading. This is not taken from anything that we have personally worked on. Again, we have y of p, which are random independent variables, and t of p, or t subscript p, uh, it contained within delta Dirac, controls the Poissonian distribution of time. The equation of motion considering the Poissonian forcing is basically the same as before. We have EI, delta to the power of 4, W of X and T by delta X to the power of 4, plus M bar, delta squared, W of X and T by delta T squared, plus RX of X and T equals ft. This is the standard equation of motion. The difference, however, is that within the term f of t, we have the Poissonian loading, which is expressed in the form shown here below, where y of p is the amplitude of the forcing actions, which are independent. n of t is a counting function. Dirac's delta uh, of x minus t minus tp multiplied by b, the speed to the velocity, uh, controls the position of the force and tp is the random time instant at which the force began and finally we have the window function this removes the force after it has traversed the beam where tal is the length of time that it takes for uh, the force to cross the length of the beam in the time domain this gives the equation here g double dot at mode k of t plus omega k squared g k of t. Here we're not considering any damping and this is equal to 2 over psi k multiplied by s k of t where s k of t is the Poissonian load. As before psi of k is the modal mass. To, illustrate, uh, to expand sorry, on the Poissonian load I should mention that this is a filtered Poisson process we see this here in phi of k uh, at t minus tp, where we use the eigenfunction psi of k uh, with v, the velocity, and tau, the time in this case, and the window function, of course, to remove the forcing action. The purpose of using a filtered Poisson process is to try and get the beam to resonance. If we look here some example forcing actions are shown and we see that the mode shapes of the beam at each uh, of its modes here, only considering the first three, are the shapes of the forcing action. This is in order to try and trigger resonance. I will very briefly, um, prior to ending, present a very short numerical example. I'm very wary of time. The beam shown here is a simple force band beam, which we've been uh, discussing, subjected to a series of random moving loads. Its length is 100 meters. Its EI is 4 times 10 to the power 11 newton meters squared. Its density multiplied by uh, the cross-sectional area, which gives us the generalized mass, is 12,000 kilograms. Each of the TMD springs are identical at 883 1,461 newton meters. Each of the dash ports are also identical at 0 0.001 newton seconds per meter, which is a very small amount of damping. And each of the masses of the TMD are the same, which are tuned to the generalized mass, which is 1% of the beam's uh, total weight. For the Poissonian distribution, the magnitudes of the loading fall between 40 kN and 240 kN. The velocity is a constant for each of the loading, 25 meters uh, per second. And lambda, which is the amount of loads that we expect to arrive per second, is 0 0.375. To find the results, a Monte Carlo simulation was run uh, where we ran 2,000 samples for each mode considering five modes, so in total 10,000 samples for the Monte Carlo. Interestingly, the numerical results show that the mean response to a series of random loads for any configuration of the beam with no TMD, with three TMDs or with only one TMD 
is virtually identical. In the standard deviation, we see that having one or three TMDs offers no advantage between one or three, but offers a significant advantage over not having any TMDs. Finally, in conclusion, very quickly, a novel method has been presented to calculate the dynamic response to deterministic loads and moving random loads of beams with any number of discontinuities. A formulation of the equation of motion within the theory of generalized functions has been proposed. The theory has been calculated via the modal superposition method, deriving novel closed form expressions for the eigenfunctions by Fourier transform of the equation of motion. The characteristic equation is a determinant of a 4 by 4 matrix for n number of attachments. The closed form expressions for Duhamel integrals of the nth mode. This method yields significant computational advantages with respect to the classical method, and upon deriving appropriate orthogonality conditions for the eigenfunctions, the beam's impulse response can be used in a convolution integral to compute the response to deterministic loads. For random moving loads, a Monte Carlo, Monte Carlo simulation has been performed. Concerning future developments, we have a number of ideas. Firstly, multi-span beams with the responsive arbitrary number of tune mass dampers under random moving loads. Also, expanding this dynamic analysis to the Timoshenko model, and then validating uh, the natural frequencies and mode shapes using an experimental small-scale model. Thank you for your time and attention. I apologise for going a little over the time I was allowed. And... Uh, I have my contact details here. If you have any questions, I would be happy to accept them now.